Christian Chudo here, academyofphotography.com. Today we're going to talk about ISO. ISO is the third and the last element of um, uh, the triangle of exposure. So understanding ISO is critical for us to control the camera. We're going to touch the definition of the ISO, what it is, when we need to use it, when we need to worry about it. We're going to go through a few examples and we reach a, a conclusion. Without further ado, let's start. This is part of the uh, basics for the beginners. So if you already control your camera and you're comfortable, you can skip this lesson. ISO is the third component of the exposure which closes the triangle together with aperture and the shutter speed. We have covered the first two in the previous tutorials and we would assume you are already familiar with those. One important difference is that aperture and shutter speed will have a mode of shooting associated with them is uh, aperture priority mode and time priority mode where you can set up one of them and let camera choose the other. ISO is slightly different, it does not have a specific mode but you have the choice of setting up the ISO manually as uh, an automatic or select a specific ISO. Let's remember the general rule for the ISO and exposure. For each ISO, 100, 200, 400 and so on, there's a specific relation between the shutter speed and the aperture to make it up and to compensate. ISO is the basis where I should start choosing the camera settings in a, uh, uh, when I'm doing a shoot. Let's go through the definition. ISO stands for International Standard of Organiza for Organization, which in this case is not as obvious uh, and for what it does. Let's ignore the terminology for the time being. ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor and it translates in how fast is the sensor recording. It is the sensor speed not to be confused with the shutter speed. Let's imagine an old cassette recording music. There used to be a specific speed and it does not matter how fast the singer sings. Uh, the speed of the tape is constant. There is a speed of recording for each ISO setting and the greater the speed, the faster the image is recorded onto the sensor. If the speed of recording is suited also to the time when the shutter is open, we are going to get a good exposed photo. If not, we won't get it when and why we should worry about ISO. ISO or the speed of the sensor recording helps in low light situation where there is not enough light for the shutter speed and the aperture to expose the image correctly. Probably the aperture would be at maximum size and the shutter speed will be longer. However, we might want the shutter speed to be shorter in order to get a sharper image. And that is why ISO is the tool to do that. By increasing the ISO, we relax the requirements for the shutter speed and aperture, however, it comes with a compromise. Please see the tutorial of Understanding Camera for a refresher in order to have the following information very clear. The greater the ISO, the less quality of the picture. The sensor captures photons in a specific time. Asking the sensor to work faster is allowing it to get less photons for the same image. The speed of the photons, the speed of light is a constant and we are willing to accept an image with less photons, so less clear pixels. The camera will estimate the missing pixels through other methods and that is why we end up with the grain, the ISO grain. Do not get scared as today the latest digital cameras are doing a pretty good job in high resolutions and will compensate for that. Just a recap, the greater the ISO, the more grain we are going to get. ISO is measured in increments from 100, 125, 160, 200 and so on up to 6400, 12000 or even above for the newest camera models. As a professional photographer I am trying to stay under 1000 as the image becomes too grainy and I am not happy with that. But depending on the situation the quality expectations of 3000 or 6000 will do the job just fine. As you probably got already the gist of it, we are going to do an exercise for you to help you understand how ISO works for yourself. I am proposing you do the same exercises in your own time with your own camera so you'll be able to control and to understand exactly how your camera treats the ISO and how that works. Just do the exercises in your own time and I, I, can, I can promise you, you will understand easier and faster ISO for yourself rather than listening to other people what ISO is doing and what is ISO. Hi, I just moved on, the mic on my computer to show you the exercises I've done. Basically what I've done is uh, at midnight in low light conditions, night photography, I have tested the ISO in increments from 100 to 6400. 
in um, two modes one was the fully automatic mode so I haven't I have modified only the ISO and leaving the camera to choose the aperture and uh, shutter speed and the other one was in full manual mode I locked in the aperture and shutter speed and uh, have noticed how the ISO works same exercise in increments so I'm just gonna move on to show you the results directly okay this is where we are uh, in Lightroom we can see exactly the results of my exercise so first image that you see in the picture is ISO 100 it's a uh, properly exposed picture as you can see it just reflects the actual light that was out there at that time moving on ISO 200 400 500 uh, 640 800 1000 2000, 2500, 3200, 4000, 5000 and 6400. The difference is not great, it's the same amount of exposure roughly and the only difference we will see is only by enlarging the first and the last one so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna show you enlarge photo so we'll see the difference in quality I'm just gonna pick up this spot so this is one thing and we're gonna show you the difference the last one is 6400 we're gonna do the same thing okay about that as you can see here the difference between the two is basically the grain for ISO 100 we have a smoother picture and for ISO 6400 we have a grainier picture where the detail is lost so if we're not gonna enlarge the images it's not gonna make a big difference so ISO is actually the best tool to get a better exposure one thing we will notice is that one thing we will notice for an ISO 6400 the camera chose a fifteenth of a second so this is way faster what that means is we're gonna get a sharper image we're gonna capture a, uh, a faster moment moving on to the test number two with the test number two what I've done was selected two settings locked them in in fully manual mode in this case I chose a uh, 2.8 aperture and one second exposure so moving on this is ISO 100 ISO 200 ISO uh, 400 500 640 800 1000 2000 2500 3200 4000 5000 and 6400 so this is the highest ISO as you as uh, you could see in manual mode the ISO what that did is overexpose the image I hope this proves the point how ISO works and basically you can use ISO to enhance the uh, low light conditions and you can get a better image there's always an amount of compromise as I just showed you the compromise is in the little detail as long as you don't uh, enlarge the picture you'll be just fine and also you need to have a good camera I suggest you repeat these two exercises uh, in your own time and with your own camera because my cameras are doing a very good job they are good quick cameras your cameras might act differently so just a recap pick up your camera uh, go in low light conditions take a tripod and repeat the two tests one in fully uh, automatic mode and one in manual mode test the ISO setting in increments and see the differences for yourself this is the best way to learn in conclusion ISO can be used as a good tool to enable the shooter to enable you in low light to use a faster shutter speed the amount of compromise between the quality which decreases with the higher ISO is for you to decide where you want to stop and how and which settings are gonna work for you hoping that you enjoyed this tutorial until I see you next time I wish you happy shooting thank you very much